for the product. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to uh, give you a bit of insight to an organization that's using it. So um, I'd like to invite Hiresh and uh, Sashin up on stage uh, to come and sit down with us. And we're going to have a, a quick chat about their use of uh, our technologies and the wider technology perspective. So please join me in welcoming them. All right. You've got microphones there. I'm already mic'd up. Cool. So, um, firstly, um, Hiresh, would you like to introduce yourself? Give us a bit of information about your role and responsibilities at Asian Paints. Yeah, I'm Harish. Uh, I look after IT at Asian Paints. Uh, been with the organization uh, through a fairly long IT journey, almost for 15 years, and uh, was part of various enterprise initiatives right from uh, the days we deployed SAP ERP and then all the next generation solutions. Hi, I'm Sachin. I run Incha Technologies and we are um, the Asian Paints partner for business process management initiatives. Super. So, um, what we'd uh, first like to talk about is, um, Hiresh, would you like to give us a bit of background of your history with SAP? So, what have you been doing over the last uh, sort of five or six years? Okay. Uh, so, I think uh, as I look at the journey in Asian Paints, uh, I would rather like to begin uh, you know, with the business context and probably uh, you would uh, know Asian Paints as a decorative paint manufacturing company. Uh, but what has happened uh, really over the last, uh, I would say, seven to eight years is that uh, Asian Paints has been kind of from the business strategy perspective kind of transforming itself from a pure manufacturer and distributor of paints to actually a services-led organization. So I don't know how many of you are aware, but uh, around seven to eight years back, we launched what is called a home solutions offering, which was essentially uh, the uh, Asian Paints offering uh, in terms of offering a painted solution. So this was a kind of a major inflection point and why this was one of the core strategies uh, is, is goes back uh, probably a decade back where uh, Asian Paints looked at the strategic options which were there in front of us and uh, I think we had been market leaders uh, for a fairly long time, you know, almost uh, for the last three decades we have been market leaders in the core decorative Spain manufacturing uh, thing and then the organization really wanted to look at what are the next wave of uh, you know, strategy is going to be and those strategies were anchored around three uh, core aspects and to briefly uh, touch upon that because that is very important to probably, you know, what we really did in the, uh, you know, the BPM or some of the NetWeaver composition environment adoption which we did over the last five years. One of the pillars was to how do we really leverage the India growth story. Uh, so the India growth story started uh, sometime in the late 90s and uh, really how should Asian Paints sustain the market leadership because you obviously open the economy, you would have multinationals coming in and how do you really sustain the uh, market leadership within the Indian geography. The second thing was to look at the entire services business because if you look at paint as a product, if you end up spending 100 rupees on the paint as a product, you probably spend 120 rupees and give it to the unorganized labor to actually apply it on your wall and the really the end product is governed by how it gets applied. and. You might have the most fantastic quality paint, but ultimately if it doesn't get applied properly, the customer is not satisfied. So we really wanted to go into the services business and that was a completely different ball game for us. And the third was the global strategy where it was kind of, you know, to grow in the emerging markets through acquisition. This was the kind of three-pronged strategy which was set out uh, by the board of Asian Paints. And as a direct result of it, the i strategy had to now really start looking at how do we build the ecosystem around the core ERP. So obviously the ERP is a backbone, does all the transaction, is a system of record, but how do we really support the business in building the artifacts around the core ERP so that uh, we are able to respond to this entire, uh, you know, the growth story and the services business. Because one of the cornerstone of this, uh, this change in strategy is innovation and the speed at which the business models would evolve. So really you have to build an IT architecture which would be flexible, agile, would respond to, you know, the changes in the business model. Even on the home solution journey, the business really experimented with a lot of models, you know, franchise model, how should it work, let's say, in a metro, how should it work in the small towns, which really meant that you needed to put an IT architecture that was very, very flexible, would really respond to, uh, let's say, a changing business model. So with that intention, we started building a careful architecture around ERP. So we kind of invested in SAP CRM. Uh, we invested in, uh, in the NetWeaver development environment where we really realized that 
yeah, the CRM and SAP would give you some core transactions, but to really build that agility, you need to have a custom application portfolio. So we went and invested in the NetViewer stack. We also invested in the master data management stack because we realized that it's very important to manage master data across uh, some of the best of breed applications and also at the rate at which you are doing product innovation, it was very important to you know get the material master right in all the transaction system and also on some of the custom built applications. And uh, the uh, fourth piece uh, into the whole thing uh, was obviously around business intelligence and data warehousing because obviously uh, when you move from a manufacturing set to a services mindset, how you are really going to look at and analyze your data is going to be of paramount importance. So these were some of the next generation solutions which you deployed after the uh, overall business strategy and the IT strategy was put in place. Thanks, Suresh. So, Sashin, how, how have you um, supported Haresh's organization over the last few years? We have been uh, partnering with Asian Paints for close to five years now, and um, it's been a, a very exciting journey. Uh, I remember one of the first projects was on um, SAP's composition environment. Uh, it was an application uh, built for managing the order management by the call center, and uh, it's a mission critical application, and uh, initially, you know, there were, uh, you know, we had we had questions whether the, the 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 server infrastructure is going to scale up because there were like 250 concurrent users, 150,000 order line items being captured by this application. Um, on ERP, this was like a cakewalk. But when we talk about building something on top of ERP to optimize this process, uh, we always have this question of of scalability and, and robustness. And uh, this application has been running for more than two years now, uh, roughly around two. Almost three years. Three years there. now. Three years, and yeah. um, I mean, I, I can say that, uh, you know, they didn't have to pay us much for, for the maintenance part, so which means that the, the, the infrastructure was really pretty robust. Uh, you know, uh, caring for 150 line items every day is, is, uh, is the benchmark. Um, and and then, from, from then, we never looked back. So there was always... Uh, updates around these scenarios. Uh, uh, the key is, as, as Harish was mentioning, that new business models were evolving. For example, institutional sales, project sales. There, there's always new ways, you know, Asian Paints uh, has been um, innovating to, to go to market and do business. The latest one being the Facebook, uh, capturing the leads from the Facebook. I mean, that was really the most uh, exciting uh, way to go to market. So, so this application uh, then could evolve to meet the needs of that new business models around that order, order, order management, order capture scenarios. And then onwards, we took on uh, initiatives on uh, BPM-centric um, scenarios like master data governance on top of MDM. Asian Paints uh, already had a very good uh, MDM implementation from FIDO2, uh, which was really a very big success story. A lot of business objectives met. But then on, on top of that, we went for um, a BPM-based master data governance, which could uh, orchestrate uh, multiple uh, process steps into an end-to-end -end automated, user-friendly, uh, and optimized process. So these are some of the highlights of our engagement in the last five years. Okay. So let, let me pick up on two points there, I think, um, and, and, and address them with Haresh specifically. So. Um, I noticed that when you were talking about what you were doing from a, from a business perspective, it seems that you've fundamentally changed your model as well, that you're going more in, into the consumer area. Yeah? So can you give us a bit of information about that and how the processes have changed? Okay. So uh, just to kind of uh, take on from what uh, Sachin mentioned, uh, what he was talking about was you know, suddenly you might wonder that you know, why I'm actually building an additional order-taking app. I mean, you have the wonderful SD module and SAP, which anyway does the job. So just to give a perspective, uh, from the growth story perspective, we were kind of adding almost 20 to 30 new depots uh, in, in India. Because as you see, uh, as we saw, the pain market was growing actually in the tier two towns. And it really meant that you need to be very close to the customers out there to really give the service levels, which meant that every uh, month you are kind of opening at least one or two depots. And those are in the smaller towns. Now, really uh, getting uh, to, you know, uh, get people to run the SAP system and manage the entire, you know, the ordering, discounting, etc. itself is a challenge. So what we did was we centralized the entire order taking process. We kind of opened up our own captive BPO where uh, we have around 300 agents who would kind of do the entire order management process. And this was the app which was kind of built on the NetViewer platform. The idea is that if you're going to go and set up a BPO, you're going to really have 
a set of users who are going to be very, uh, I would say, um, not constant. They are not employees of you, they are employees of an outsourced entity. They come and kind of keep doing, uh, I mean, there are those college students who would work part-time and really teaching them SAP screens is really not going to work. So the idea was to really simplify the order taking process. Obviously the whole thing is embellished with a call management application with you know the entire stuff which happens in a typical BPO. But the whole idea was to build a fairly integrated view. And it's not only the order view which would come over here, but you would also try to now get the information about the promotions running in the market. So probably at the same time when the agent gets a call from a dealer, on the side he would also kind of start showing up certain personal information because one of the biggest worry which was there from the business, if you centralize the order taking experience then there are certain relationships. I mean Indians really like to latch on to relationships. So one of the thought was, oh actually a Nasik dealer is calling the Nasik OA and the OA is a friend of that dealer and probably ends up talking in the local language there and before placing the order is also talking about the family stuff, you know, uh, what's your kid doing and so on and so forth. Now if really that becomes a name, a nameless, faceless guy sitting in a BPO out here, how do you really manage that kind of a transition? So obviously the whole idea was that you build a composition layer where not only the order ticking happens, but at the same time based on the caller ID you would fetch